Guys, what are we gonna look at today? Well, we're gonna look at knife maintenance. We're gonna take these knives apart and clean them. I'm gonna show you the differences between these knives, but we're not gonna do it yet because here comes that studio intro. So like I said, we are gonna take these three knives, well, we're gonna take two of these three knives apart and clean them up and maintain them just to show you guys what maintenance looks like. The reason I have this one out is because this is a little bit of a different animal. This knife is press fit. You can't really take this knife apart and put it back together. If you take this knife apart, it ruins it. It is basically permanently attached. It is not one that you can take apart and clean up, but you can maintenance it and you can clean it to a point. So we'll probably do this first because it's easiest and then we'll get into these. So we're gonna do the Archbishop. We're gonna do this Sabenza, which runs, so the reason we're doing three, one, this needs cleaned. Two, this runs on washers, this runs on bearings. And so there's a different uh, approach to cleaning these based on the construction. So we're gonna move everything out of the way and we're gonna start with this one, but I gotta move the mat and everything. We have to use a different mat and all that stuff. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started, right, guys. Like I said, this knife you can't take apart, really, um, because it is press fit, so there's no way to take this knife apart to get to the internal workings. But what you can do is you can lubricate and clean it. So down inside here, if this was dirty, this knife is brand new, just came to me. If this knife was dirty, you can get down in there with a, a very thin, t you can use a toothpick, um, a maintenance pick, I have some very, very thin Q-tips that I've purchased for elect for use on electronics that make it down in there, and it works really well for that. And then you have these little areas here, especially on the front part of the blade where you can see, can you see there how the blade, I don't know if I can get enough light in there to see, yeah, you can see how the blade rotates past those. Well, these are the screw holes for the pocket clip. So what I recommend is, and it's really simple, um, if you've gotten a new electronic device, a new telephone, a new cell phone, anytime in the last few years, you know it comes with one of these. Um, what I'll do is I will start cleaning these holes out as such. As you can see, I'll clean them out like this. And then you can actually push the material through as that area opens up. You can see how it opens up. You can push most of that material out and then you can clean it up from inside here. Now, the nice thing about that is you don't ever have to worry about losing screws or any of those things on these knives. I'm trying to get these lights in an area where there's not so much reflection or shadow. Um, but yeah, you can see that this is a little bit different. So basically the only thing you're really gonna do on these is you're gonna take your preferred lubricant. I like KPL because it comes in three different grits, uh, three different viscosities, I should say. And they, they it seems to work pretty well. And I'll just put a drop right there, just wet it just ever so slightly on that. And that's the only really point that you're really gonna need to worry about because that's the where your lock interfaces with the back of the, the tang of the knife and it drops in and you're gonna get, that lubrication is gonna work its way around that pivot. This knife is really clean, it's brand new. I've only been carrying it for a day or two. So yeah, these aren't really hard to maintain at all. The big thing you wanna look at and maintain, the biggest point is that little, see that little area right there that the lock actually drops into? That little area right there where the lock actually drops into is going to be really important to keep clean because if you don't keep stuff out of that area and then that lock tries to drop in, sometimes it can have enough stuff in there that the lock won't fully engage and you could have lock slip from that. It would just, you know, and not fully engage and then you don't have the full lock engagement. Lockbacks are pretty robust. Uh, I don't think you really have to worry, but you'd have to get that pretty dirty down in there. Um, but yeah, there you go. So there's the maintenance on these. These are really simple. Uh, it's just a matter of lubrication. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to be, I believe we'll do washers next because they're most time consuming. So as you can see on this knife is a different animal. We are going to have to take out hardware. We're gonna have to remove hardware. We're gonna have to take this knife apart to clean it. So now on this knife, we have to remove the hardware to get to what we have to maintenance because of the police model, we just only put some lubrication on it. This knife's a little bit different. This knife runs on washers and for washer knives, I absolutely 100% recommend using fluorinated grease. Uh, it's a longer lasting lubricant. It doesn't uh, wash out. And when you put, a lot of times when you put oil on 
the uh, washer run knives, it just doesn't stay as smooth and clean for as long. So fluorinated grease, you don't have to use the Chris Reeves brand. There's all kinds of fluorinated grease out there. First things first, you got to know what tools you need. Uh, most of the tools you're going to see are linked down below, including lubricants and things like that. So you got to find out what tools you need. And on a Chris Reeves Sebenza, you're going to be using this right here, which is a Allen key. So you can see, you can make sure you got the right size, fits all the way in. Um, now one side of this is actually the screw and one side is actually threaded, but they're basically the same size. So I always put my knife together from the top, from the show scale. Uh, that way I always remember it has, it doesn't matter which way you actually do it. You can put these screws in from this side if you choose, because it doesn't have any effect. However, I like to do it this way. So I always remember where I'm going to take the knife apart from that way. You don't stick your, you know, your, your Allen key up inside the threaded area. So, you know, you just get this knife apart here. And we're going to skip the axle. Well, no, we'll just go ahead. We'll do the full disassembly. The nice thing about the Sebenza is you don't have to worry about what how you tighten this down. You basically can just torque that all the way down. You don't have to worry about blade play. And then you just simply pull the blade and the washers all the way out. Now, you don't have to take this knife all the way apart to clean and maintenance this knife. That's one of the misconceptions. There's no other parts in here that really need to be cleaned, um, except your detent ball, which you can get to your detent ball, which is a tiny little ball right there. You can just get in there with a Q-tip while it's still apart and clean it up. So um, this knife is not too dirty, so it's gonna be simple, but what you would do is you're going to take your pivot, bushing out, since this is a Sebenza, you're going to take your pivot bushing out and all of your washers, and you're just going to lubricate them. So first step is always going to be just clean off any old lubricants and things like that. That's why we're using this towel as a little drop here um, as a backdrop, and you're just going to clean that all off. And since this isn't dirty, I don't really need to do much. I'm just going to clean up the little stuff. And then you're just going to take a little bit of your fluorinated grease. This stuff does have a tendency to settle. So give me a second. I'm going to shake this all up. All I did was just give it a quick shake up like this uh, from both ends, like I was shaking out an old thermometer. Um, and you're just going to take a little bit of this grease and you're just going to put it in the areas where your bearings, but not your bearings, but your washers are going to run and you just smear around. It does not take much. And if you get a little bit down in the pivot area itself, that's fine because you actually do need to put a little bit in there. So it's really easy to tell which goes where. There's one large washer, one small one. There's one large shiny area and one small one. So just basically put your pivot bushing in. Now this can be the, the difficult part here because if you don't get it in just perfectly straight, it's a very, very tight fit. And if it's at all candid, it will stick and you just kind of work your way past that. And so now there's a little bit of oil in there or grease in there, I should say, you're just gonna basically put it back together. So you find the side that's the shiny side, which is gonna be the side that is going to rub on the steel. And then the same with this, you put that on there. And then now you've lubricated that. And we're just gonna make sure that that pivot bushing in the center is centered and we can easily just put this knife back together without having to take completely take it apart. It is the nice thing about the Sebenza. I don't have to take that knife completely apart to put it back or to clean it and then put it back together. And you simply slide that in and then you're going to line everything up. You're going to take your screw from the back. You're going to push it in the hole and then you're going to work that knife around until your pivot hole lines up. And you can just push that, that pivot through, put your screw back on it, simply take that right like that, screw that down as tight as it goes, and there you go. Brand new, clean, fresh grease in that Sebenza. It's nice and clean, nice and fresh. The action's nice and smooth. So it is a fairly simple operation um, with less disassembly required than say the knife we're about to do. So let's go ahead and get started on that. A right, little bit of step back in. I use these to get up in here. So remember I told you you can get up in here in between the lock bar and clean off your, your detent ball. There you go. Detent ball is nice and clean. You don't want to over lubricate this because what can happen is you get a little bit of grease on that and that allows the lock bar to slip over a little too far. And then sometimes on these, you will get a little bit of lock stick because the grease has allowed the lock bar to go over a little bit further. But there you go. Then I just cleaned off my 
um, decent bowl. So, all right, now to onto the next knife. Okay, guys, there is um, a couple ways you can maintenance this knife. Now, this knife probably does not need taken apart as badly as some other knives that I own. It's a little dirty, but you can actually midterm as opposed to taking this part, you can always wash this out under the sink because you can see there's a good size gap in there. You can actually see the bearings and the bearing races in there. You can kind of see light through them. You can take this to the sink, wash it out, let it dry and put, apply a drop of lubricant on either side of the pivot. You can see those little air, those little lines and through capillary action, it's going to get down in there and then you don't have to necessarily take the knife apart to clean it. But if you do need to take it apart to clean it, the downside is on these, you have to completely disassemble it. The, the, uh, the bear, the uh, the washer run knives don't rec do requ don't require you full assembly to get to all parts. On this, you absolutely have to. So let's go ahead and get into that now. Like I said, all the tools that I'm using, with the exception of this custom made uh, bit driver, are in the description below. So Torx bits, things like that, all the bits and everything you need. Now this requires two different sizes. You need a T eight six seven eight and a T fifteen or twenty. I believe it's a T15. Ah, what is that? Let's take a look and see. It's a T15. So your T15 fits the pivot on this. Now, the only reason I knew both of those is because, well, I own a lot of Fram Force knives. So start with the disassembly. Now, a lot of people complain about these single-sided pivots. There's a trick to it. You put, open up the knife all the way. You put a little bit of pressure on it this way, like laterally. So you can put your thumb here, a little finger right there, and then start to twist that. And that additional tension that you've put on the pivot in the middle allows you to take the screw out without it spinning. Now, Farron Ford just did use a very skinny uh, pivot screw. Um, and then you basically can then take your knife the rest of the way apart. Now, I like taking a knife apart if I'm going to do maintenance. I like taking it apart from the show scale. Some knives don't give you that option, but I prefer to take a knife apart. And these are not magnetic screws, but I'm definitely gonna use that screw bolt because I do not wanna have to call Elliot and tell him that I need a T8 in toxic green anodized for my archbishop because I don't think they would ever match color-wise with the wear. So once you take your screws apart, you can easily then, one of the things that I recommend kick your knife over a little bit because it takes the tension off the lock bar and kicks the blade up a little bit. And then you can just disassemble your knife. So you see you've got that area right there. You've got your bearings, which are kind of dirty. Um, detent ball and other set of bearings, your pivot and bearings. So we're going to clean all this up real quick. Now with this, it's a little bit dirtier. So I am going to grab little bit of rubbing alcohol to cut through some of the grease and grit and gunk that's here. Oh, I did not realize I had already removed the cap. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit on here. I'm gonna get that bearing out. I'm gonna take this bearing and I'm gonna get a little bit of, a little bit here, a little bit here. Now we've done this a bunch of times in the channel, but I just, some people had said they wanted to see another maintenance video. I'm gonna use this to clean off this rolling detent. Now, the cool thing about a rolling detent is it's actually its own roller bearing. Um, it is a bearing, it's a single bearing in a in a bearing race. It's basically there. Um, and it gives you some really smooth action and you absolutely want to lubricate that as well as the bearings that are in the rest of the knife. So it's just simple. Just give it a quick wipe down. Any nastiness that you see, wipe it off. Wipe any old stuff off of your pivot and then lock face of the blade and those areas where they lock up. So anything that you see that looks like it needs to be cleaned up, just wipe it down and you can see um, if you have a bunch of gunk down in this detent hole, you want to clean that out as well, which is another reason why I keep these. They work really well for that. So these things are an invaluable tool. Don't ever get rid of these. You can always use these for something because it's so much easier than trying to find you know, trying to find something that you can hang up. I, a lot of times will hang these up um, because they do have that little hole in it. So, but since I have a magnetic bowl that lives on the side of my workbench, it's not a problem. So 
you're going to want to check and make sure that there's nothing in any of these areas and you want to look for any unusual wear and things that might need to be cleaned out. Like you can get wind up with stuff in here, stuff down in these little cutouts that can affect lockup. So let's get this put back together. So we're going to put the pivot back in. These are actually, once you get used to doing this, it's pretty simple. Now, I do recommend these bearings have an open side and a closed side. Most of these metal bound race bearings, I like to put the open side down in. It prevents a little bit of gunk and nastiness from getting in there. And then I just take a drop, and I literally mean you only need a drop. Get that drop right there put some of it on the bearing and then run it the rest of the way up the pivot because you still are gonna have some metal on metal. Even though the bearings are there, that is still a friction surface. Then you just simply put your blade back in. Now, the nice thing about this is these are all captured and stuck. Some knives I do know that you take the screw out and then these parts fall out because they're just in there. There's just body screws hold, but these, every part of this knife is screwed from both sides. So not an issue. Second bearing goes on top open side up because it's going to go in the pocket of this and then just simply like I said a drop that's all you need that little drop that was on that is all you need it's going to last it'll be fine I like the KPL some people like other lubricants use whatever lubricant works for you I just find that the KPL has a tendency to uh, be a little better at, at staying and not washing away so then you're just going to lock up all your little shouldered areas um, I'm going to push the blade down a little bit to take that gap and take the tension off that. Now, reassembling a bearing knife is a little bit different. So I'm going to just put that in finger tight and get my, just line this up and I'm going to just put that in just until it, just till it touches the scale. I know this is a Sunday video, so you guys have got time, but I'm not going to tighten it down because I want to make sure everything is centered and correct before I tighten anything down. So I know you probably have heard me say that before. So we're going to basically just put our body screws in. We're not going to tighten them down either. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what... Now this one you can, the lock, the, your lock, you can tighten it all the way down. But these two body screws, I, I leave them a little... I just, I don't snug them. I just put them on just till I feel a little tension. And then I look and see where my pivot is at. And I make sure I work this around a little bit to make sure that my, that my um, pivot, the actual pivot has gone through. So the screw, now I can tighten it down a little bit. And you don't have to crank down on this crazy crank down on it. You don't have to. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel for any movement and then just snug it ever so slightly. And then you're gonna look and see, are we centered? Do we have blade play left and right? No, it's nice and solid. And then I'm gonna tighten these screws. A lot of times, if you don't have your knife centered, you can play with these exterior body screws and the pivot, and you can work it from side to side a little bit and get it centered. Now, a lot of people would have put their, their uh, detent ball lube on now. I use the heavy and I prefer to do it after because if you put it on, sometimes it runs down and then you get it on your hands and then it doesn't go where you want it. So I take the heavy, the KPPL, the KPL heavy, and I just put a little drop. I get a little drop of it on. See, that's all it takes. I know it's out of focus for you, but it's perfectly in focus for me. And I just work it around on that. You don't need a lot. And then you just work it back and forth. And that knife is even smoother than it was before. Um, Super, super smooth. So there you go. We've maintenance three knives, three different ways, three different types of bearing systems or, or washers and uh, one that you couldn't take apart. So let's go ahead and turn this around and do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. There was a little bit of knife maintenance 101. And this is just the way I do it. And those are the lubricants I use. I know there's a lot of people that have different styles and things like that. And I can honestly tell you there is nothing wrong with just a drop of lubricant from the top as long as you've not got a lot of metal or abrasive or stuff that's inside a knife that's going to be causing internal damage. Those knives technically did not need to be taken apart to clean today, 
Um, I just thought it would be fun for us to watch. So yeah, there you go, guys. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you will not get notified of all the content that goes up. There's probably going to be a change to that. I just talked with someone about that. Um, if you want to support the channel financially, it's as simple as going down and using any of the affiliate links down below that you can that you find to shop for something on Amazon or Blade HQ or any of the other sites that I have. Coffee Brand Coffee is a great company. I don't care if you don't even want to support me. I really don't make any money on it. I just think that their coffee is good. It's a good product and it's a good company. Uh, other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below that is tier-based. Uh, pick a tier that works best for you, but everyone saves $5 off the sharpening service. Everyone has access to the Gilded server. Premium baseline tier members uh, are automatically entered into a giveaway that I do on the Gilded server, and premium tier members have access to a sharpening tutorial series I've built specifically for them. And the final way is I have a merchandise store. I'm not wearing my merchandise right now, but I do have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can pick up my merchandise or any of the other content creators there's merchandise for 10% off with the coupon code CRAZYSHARP. All one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp Saves you 10% at checkout. Uh, that's it, guys. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you all in the next video.